A lot of people, when they are in business, particularly founders or energetic next generations, get really stuck in a rut. The rut is, here's what's comfortable to me, and I justify my behavior by the fact that what I'm doing seems to be working. As opposed to saying, here's what I need to be doing to achieve the long-term goals that I have. So when I talk to people, whether it's in speeches or or one-on-one, I'll say, what's your long-term goal? My long-term goal is to have a healthy, thriving, surviving business and a family that is together, cohesive, and harmonious. Well, if you want to do that, there are certain things that you need to develop to ensure the business will continue well once you're no longer there to oversee it and to ensure that the family will continue well once you're no longer there to provide the glue or the conflict management that you provide now. One of them is to develop people underneath you so that they can run the business in your absence, which means you need to step out of doing the day-to-day business things, being the control freak, being the day-to-day manager, making sure nobody makes mistakes, works against your goals of developing a company that can out-survive you. You need people who are comfortable making mistakes and learning from them so they can develop and move forward. You don't need the best possible organization while you're alive. You need the best possible organization that can survive. And to do that, you're going to have to step back. There's no other choice. I once had a person that I had worked with um, who I took away for a couple of weeks of training. And it was in another country. And he just couldn't not stand to be around his business. He wanted to be in the middle of it. And when some worker had a tragic and fatal accident, he almost stopped his training and got on the next plane to go back. And I said, friend, what can you do from there that your people can't do other than be the person who's there? What will change if you're there? What will change in any way? And what would you be communicating to them if you don't go back? On the one hand, you could assume I'm communicating disinterest and I don't care. I said, they know you better than that. So what might else you be communicating? Well, they may be feeling like I trust them. I said, exactly. You need to communicate through your actions and not just your words that you trust your people. They'll develop and work into your trust. Six months later, best advice you could have ever given. I'm so much more comfortable going away now. My people are performing better than they were before I left. So step back a little bit, allow the business to, in your mind, sub-perform because it would perform better than you do to develop its own capacity to perform well. And at the same time, focus on building those things that you need to build. Now in the business, that includes better systems to develop people, but it also includes governance to make sure they're doing the job that they need to be doing which is kind of what you do as a leader. And in the family side, it's systems to keep the family cohesive and unified. And as a leader of the family and a leader of the business, those should be top priorities. 